second episode of Prehistoric Planet recently dropped today, so of course I took a look at it and I really enjoyed it. Honestly, I think I like this one more than the, the ocean one. Some things that I noticed when watching this one compared to the coasts episode is that the lighting in the coast episode was not the greatest a good chunk of the time. Often it was very dark and stuff, which I get because obviously the further down you go into the ocean, the harder it is to see. But it kind of got to the point where it was still almost too hard to see it, especially compared to here. I think also here, I just really like landscape shots. It's really cool to see the landscape shots of the deserts and other these other arid and dry areas compared to the ocean where you can tell that a good chunk of it is CGI including the envi the environments are CGI versus here you can tell that these landscapes are actually there. So obviously I'll, I'll talk a little more about the actual episode this time versus the last time. Uh, this episode starts off with showing Dreadnoughtus, Dreadnoughticus, Dreadnoughtus, I don't know if I'm saying that right, the, the, the big, the pompadour, no. This episode starts off showing with Dreadnoughticus. Uh, which is the big sauropod that they recently found in South America. It also makes an appearance in the new Jurassic World uh, movie that's up, that's coming up soon. Um, it's also the one that you see all the little nets, neck sacks uh, inflating. It was really cool because it kind of showed a, terror, a mating battle, almost kind of like elephant seals between two males. And I really liked it. It was cool to see like these big giant animals just going at it and like almost kind of using similar tactics as elephant seals trying to knock the other over and like raking each other uh, with their teeth. The only thing that really bugged me during this fight was the music. Um, I do want to kind of compare this to Walking with Dinosaurs because I feel like that is to a certain extent what it's trying to emulate. In Walking with Dinosaurs it didn't always have to have music going. It did have uh, some great musical pieces in it, but it always took, but it also took time to be like, hey, you don't have to have music. We'll just let the scene play out. Just let the animals and the sounds just kind of immerse you. Versus here, when these two males are fighting, you can barely hear the sounds they're making because the music by Hans Zimmer is so loud. And I mentioned it in the first episode, but there are certain scenes where the music is kind of obnoxious and almost kind of distracts. And I think for me personally, this is the worst case of that. So um, hopefully they, it doesn't continue. Uh, really, that's probably my only complaint with this series so far. Even then, a good chunk of the music does still work. It's just some of it is so overpowering that you cannot hear the sound effects or take in the environment. And it's a little distracting. Uh, next, we kind of some other animals that we see include the Tarbosaurus. I really like that they do just kind of like in real life. Tarbosaurus did look pretty similar to T Rex, but it actually had a slightly narrower skull. And here we see the same thing. The you can tell that the skull is slightly narrower, and there's some other subtle differences that set it apart as Tarbosaurus and not just ah T Rex, but Asian. We also get to see the lovely Velociraptor and not the ones from Jurassic Park or Jurassic World. It's so nice to finally see some real, realistic looking, accurate Velociraptors. The last that I can think of, or at least the one that comes to mind, is probably Planet Dinosaur, and even those aren't fully accurate, but they're probably the closest that I can think of personally. Um, but we get to kind of see them. We only see a, one clip with them. And we have, I've seen in the trailer, you see them later in another episode. So I wonder if they're going to kind of show the same animals around the planet, maybe just at different times. Because they showed the T-Rex in the Coast episode, but I know it's going to appear later in the Forest episode because you can see clips of it in the trailer. Um, so I think that's kind of the approach they're taking. So I wouldn't be surprised to see old dinosaurs in previous episodes return back into these new ones. Uh, and then there is a waterhole scene, which I really enjoyed. It's very reminiscent of the Jungle Book from 2016 with the water truce, uh, if you remember that movie, which is ironically directed by Jon Favreau. And I think that's kind of almost why he took on that project and the Lion King remake was almost kind of test the technology to see if he could make a documentary. Because I know he produced this series, which... Honestly, producers, 
kind of varies on how much their involvement is. I mean, Steven Spielberg has produced all the Michael Bay Transformers movies, so that kind of says that. But it's really cool to see these different animals interacting with each other in a way that almost reminds me of like if you could look go to go on a safari to Africa or look up a YouTube video of just different animals out of watering hole just drinking. I think just seeing different animals interact with each other, not necessarily always having to hunt or fight or hunt or fight with each other, but they're just interacting and just living, just kind of like a lot of animals. And there's actually one shot, I'll probably put a little clip here, or maybe a screenshot. Uh, you can actually see, see a Therizinosaurus in the background. Unfortunately, it didn't get much screen time. Uh, maybe it'll appear later, but I'm going to be honest, even though it was on screen for maybe like two seconds, I was like, it's a Therizinosaurus! Which was kind of how people react to Jurassic World movies when they're like, it's a this dinosaur. So, the only problem is, is this isn't a movie where it's dependent on story and characters. It's just a documentary, which is focusing solely on the dinosaurs in this case. So, I feel like it's, for someone to get excited by seeing, you know, their favorite dinosaur here is a lot different than Jurassic World. Because you don't look at this documentary and be like, this <laughs> having this dinosaur is all that it's got for it. That's the whole purpose of creating this documentary. I gotta say the star for me of this show was Mononychus. It's the little dinosaur in the thumbnail. I remember actually seeing this dinosaur back in Planet Dinosaur. It was in for just a little bit, but it was the one that gets killed by the Oraptor. But it was kind of cool to be like, hey, I recognize that from my childhood, but in this new uh, modern look. And I really like the design that they went with a barn owl uh, coloring. Really kind of fits the theme of how they talk about in this episode, of how this animal was able to uh, have excellent hearing, and that's how it was you using it. To detect its prey termites and other small insects so i thought that was pretty cool but i think just all the scenes involving it i think they were done well it was it's always cool to see animals that you don't always know a ton about and they're not just like the big scary carnivore or the big herbivore like it's something a lot smaller and maybe something that a lot of people would overlook or not really know about so i'm glad that they're bringing attention to these kind of dinosaurs that don't really that aren't really known by the main by the mainstream public that's probably one of my favorite things about dinosaur and just animal documentaries or just documentaries in general is when they bring attention to these lesser known organisms um that most people don't know about and that's why i really like it because you're like whoa i didn't know that this creature did that or i didn't know that this type of creature existed i think that's one of the great things about documentaries is yes you can make a documentary about you know t-rex or whatever but more people will probably learn something about Mononychus be like, whoa, that's cool. I didn't know that there was a dinosaur that behaved like that. So that's always one of my favorite, personal favorite things about documentaries and seeing the new information that you take away from them. I think another, I think the final standout scene for this episode for me personally was seeing the different pterosaurs interacting with each other. Uh, Barbadaculus, I'm pretty sure is what they said it was called. Uh, but they would have the males had these like huge crests and stuff at least the large males and it was cool seeing them almost kind of replicate some behavior from modern day animals where some males aren't necessarily as big and strong as the dominant males so instead of that they almost focus on trying to be sneaky and when i was watching it i was thinking of cuttlefish and then behind the scenes they actually kind of go over that and use cuttlefish as one of the examples that they base this behavior off which I thought was kind of cool. And I actually recommend checking out the behind the scenes, kind of explaining the science and evidence for some of the some of the decisions that you see in each episode. Like in the first one, they talk about the Tyrannosaurus swimming. And then in this one, they talk about Pterosaurus sneaking behind. So that was pretty cool to see that. But where you have like these males that look like females, minus some slight coloring, are able to sneak into the colony and get past the dominant males in order to mate with the females by being sneaky as opposed to trying to directly compete head-on with these alpha males. There's one scene that's kind of funny. It's very sussy with the big male Barbadaculus. I hope I'm saying that right. Approaches one of the smaller s sneaky males and thinks it's a female and tries to court it. And I just thought it was funny because haha, -ha, sus. So yeah, that's kind of the thing uh, about this episode. I liked it more personally. I think it looks a lot better. 
I think uh, that's probably the biggest thing. I also just like learning about the different environments and stuff. I think also the creatures just in here generally interested me more than the first one. Not to say the first episode didn't have interesting creatures, it did, but just more personally. I find it more interesting to learn about like Mononychus, an obscure dinosaur versus like Ah, T-Rex, again, even if it's done well. And that's the thing, in the behind the scenes, he mentions that they've known that pterosaurs have existed f for over 200 years, and yet they recently made these discoveries relating to the large head crests that you see in, the, in this episode. And the thing is that, like, for all the knowledge that we know on this planet, whether about living organisms or extinct ones, we're constantly learning more information about them. And to me, that's one of the great things about this planet is that no matter how much we know, there's always something new to learn about this world. And so with that, I kind of end this. I say goodbye. Have a great day. Stay safe out there.